So this is going to be another side-by-side uh, -side with the uh, Sony Handycam, or Sony Action Cam, and the GoPro to show you the difference for the infrared on the infrared light, which will be on the front of the uh, quad here. <coughs> And it will be um, articulating, so we can look down, point it straight down, ahead, and we'll illuminate the infrared. So now the infrared is on. I can't see it with my eyes, but I'm guessing it's uh, on the GoPro infrared. It should be pretty bright. And with the uh, Sony Handycam, without the infrared, it should look just kind of normal. Alright, so what I'm doing right now is I'm holding the infrared camera right next to the Sony Action Cam, which has the infrared glass still on it. So it's blocking out the infrared rays while the GoPro is allowing the infrared to come through. Now, as you can see on the GoPro, there should be a red hue to everything and as it gets darker out the GoPro will actually see better in the dark than the Sony cam now the Sony action cam because it has the IR glass on it it's filtering out that red hue that infrared light so that you're not uh, getting it mixed with the uh, lighting coming into the camera now, as it would get darker the Sony action cam seeing the real light or the light that we see as humans uh, will tend to get darker and harder to see while the GoPro will actually uh, see much better in the dark and that's pretty much the physics behind the um, optics in the light for infrared versus uh, filtered infrared it shouldn't even say uh, a camera has a regular light because regular light actually is infrared it's filtered infrared our eyes automatically filter it out the infrared So here's a uh, few different cameras that you can get out there on the uh, market the, um, <clears throat> for a uh, point, of, point of view or action cams or whatever. Um, I'll just start with the uh, cheapest one here. <clears throat> this is the uh, Mobius and it's actually, uh, it's actually a pretty good camera. I, I like the daytime um, image that it records in <coughs> it um it's pretty clear it's got great color it's very light and runs about 80 bucks um, this is a Mobius I had taken apart you can see the battery I got an extender for the lens so you can put the lens on it and then uh, actually I got a uh, custom lens I made here um, the lens uh, pretty much just screws in here the, all these lenses <coughs> will pretty much work on any of these cameras and you can order these lenses pretty much on the internet anywhere um, I use Amazon got a whole bunch of them as you can see um, <coughs> you have the uh, this is a Midland I believe this is 85 to 90 bucks now th these aren't Wi-Fi the only Wi-Fi one is the uh, GoPro but because I think the Wi-Fi interferes with too many things anyway I'd rather get a non Wi-Fi I don't I don't have any reason for Wi-Fi <coughs> and um, this is a cheaper version of the Midland. This is only a uh, 720, I believe, where this is a 1080. Uh, you can see that there's no lens in this one. I use the lens for something else. But the one thing you will notice, if you look at these lenses, well, except for that one, because that's a custom one I made, they're all pretty much the same lens. Now, the Sony Action Cam and the GoPro, uh, this Sony, <coughs> the non-Wi-Fi, is about um, 99 bucks. This GoPro is close to 400. Well, it's like 299. And the thing is, is that this GoPro uses all the same Sony internal stuff as this Sony uh, action cam. The GoPro allows you a little bit more on the menu. It's shaped different, <coughs> but the uh, it has the same processor. In fact, Sony makes all the internal parts for the GoPro. Uh, so they're basically the same camera. Uh, you'll get the same results with them, just depending on how you want to modify them or take them apart or 
a little doodad if you want. Um, the GoPro, I mean, the Sony Africam actually has a uh, analog input for a microphone. This goes on a little handheld thing that you can uh, see your display, mini HDMI, and then your um, USB. A lot of the same types of stuff <clears throat> that the uh, GoPro has. Um, now this GoPro, I modified it to be IR. And what I did is this is the original GoPro lens. It's actually cheaper. Well, it appears to be cheaper than the other lenses are made cheaper. Um, little plastic pieces on there. Uh, this is a lens that I had taken apart. And this was <coughs> came originally with the uh, Sony Handycam. Um, this was a Sony Handycam lens. Also can go on the GoPro. Um, I started working on taking the uh, infrared um, the infrared portion of it for the glass out of the back and I kind of destroyed it. You got to be careful when you're doing that. <coughs> and um, the way these cameras work, basically, pretty much, or the lenses at least, is that you have the front focal piece, which would be, um, and this is the GoPro lens, this piece right here on the front. <coughs> you have all the elements inside of it, takes the light, and on the very back, back here, you have this one little lens or this little piece of glass and that's the IR filter and what that does is as the light enters the lens you have all the different colors um, and it passes through when it gets to the IR filter the IR filter will reject all the infrared why do we want to um, not allow the infrared to come through uh, basically goes like this. Light is made up of all the colors of the rainbow. <coughs> so you have your blues on one end of the extreme and blue light very narrow. As it travels um, this narrow beam easy to block doesn't go far. That's why when you see um, any signs that are in blue written signs and neon signs you really can't even see them that far away or at least tell what they're saying too far away because the uh, narrow band of blue light gets lost. It doesn't penetrate as well. Now red is very long. It's a very long frequency. And these are on the opposite sides of the spectrum. That's why if you have emergency vehicles and they're running both the red and the blue, it's such a contrast. It's, it's, uh, it's very noticeable. <clears throat> so why do we block this? Well, we have our visible red light, and we have our blues, right? The blues doesn't bother us too much because they're easily, um, they just don't really mix in with other light, and, and you don't really see too much of it. Now, underwater, you'll see the blue, um, the short wave, but um, out in the air, it doesn't really make a difference. Now, what you do have is you have one frequency higher than visible red, and that's your infrared. Now, the infrared, the problem is because it's such a long wave, it does interfere and make some of the visible light look a little off as we'll show you in the uh, when we use the GoPro to show you during daylight what it looks like <clears throat> and uh, that's why we have the infrared filter block out that infrared so that the light looks normal and it doesn't have that red bleeding um, when you're using infrared in, in the regular light so that's what this little filter does now if you want to see in the dark then um, remove this little filter. Get rid of that filter and allow the infrared to come through. And now you're getting a very, very long frequency light that can pretty much penetrate um, uh, longer than any other light. And because it's part of the red, it, it you get this red U, but you can actually see it. Now the other thing is that you can have lights that um, shine infrared and uh, those uh, LED lights and if you have LED lights that shine infrared you can illuminate illuminate an area remove the infrared glass you'll be able to see in the dark and that's basically how uh, infrared works <clears throat> and uh, I'll do some things to show you and uh, it's very easy to turn any one of these cameras into an infrared camera just gotta remove the infrared glass 
So what we're gonna do is um, we have these connectors. We're um, gonna go into the power. So we have our infrared light here. This is our infrared LED light. We're gonna set up the 12 volt connector here. So we can um, connect it to a battery. We got some heat shrink on here so we can, uh, after we solder, I use this as a uh, heat sink so it doesn't cause the heat shrink to uh, melt. Heat shrink right over the soldered part. That's the positive wire. Now we're going to do the negative. But this is going to connect to the uh, LiPo battery, and the flat end here is always going to be positive. So we're going to connect the red positive wire and solder that. into the positive connector here. Now we'll just turn it over. It's going to be hot. And we'll do the same for the um, negative terminal. Two irons going. This is my thinner one. The smaller wires for something like this I'd use my thicker one but I don't have it plugged in and I don't want to wait till it heats up. And this is going to do the job just fine. Let's uh, test the connection. Okay. Go free. All right, so uh, let's test this to make sure it works. And if you're testing this, one thing you have to keep in mind when we plug it in. And these are going to look very dim because we're we're not using the IR light right now. But um, you can see that uh, it's got a photo sensor on it. So if we cover the photo sensor, it comes on. If we take it off, so when it thinks it's in the dark, um, those little lights will come on, and that's the uh, infrared. Now on here it doesn't look that bright, but in the um, on an infrared camera it'd be very bright. In fact, well. Uh, We'll have the GoPro and we'll show you just how bright it is.